If you would like this hat or other merch for yourself, please check out my new store at Teespring. Find it in the description down below. Hello everybody and welcome back to Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some Baldur's Gate 3. Larian Studios, who developed this game, developed one of my favorite RPGs of all time. That's Divinity Original Sin 2. That was what, back in like 2017 or something like that? And uh, yeah, I think they might want to one-up themselves with this one. So, Baldur's Gate 3, here we are. It's based off of the 5th edition D&D rule set. A rule set that I have some familiarity with, but am not completely familiar with. So in other words, I've played a little bit of 5th uh, edition D&D, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to have an encyclopedic knowledge of all of the skills and all of the paths that all of these um, classes are going to be able to go down. Um, but I have enough knowledge that hopefully I'll be able to share with you guys how to play the game and, uh, you know, just some of the intricacies of what's going on behind the scenes. So. Just so you all know, I'm going to be playing this on Ultra Settings, and I'm going to be trying this on the Hardest Difficulty, which I believe they call Tactician. So, yeah, I mean, let's get into it. Um, now, I bought a new computer to be able to play this game at the highest settings and record at the same time. And if you want to help support me and what I do here, make sure that you do look down in the description down below and see how you might be able to support the channel. And honestly, supporting the channel can just be here watching. But, you know, if you want to help me in other ways, do check that out. So, I think I've already set up my options. We've already got this in Ultra. And we're going to be playing on Tactician, a tough campaign emphasizing strategic combat. This could be a, this could be a mistake. I have no idea. We'll have to see. Also, something that I'm sure some of you are going to be wondering. I'm going to try not to save scum in this playthrough. Our goal will be to not do any safe scumming. So, if that's something you're worried about, just know that that's what I'm going to be trying to do. Unpleasant. Absolutely unpleasant. Alright, so just so everybody knows, I did play the Early Access, and uh, I do have a playthrough of my Early Access uh, on the channel, so you can check that out if you want to, to see what the differences are going to be. Um, some of the stuff in this first act are going to be things that I've experienced before, and some of it's going to be brand new, depending on what and where they added things, so um, just keep that in mind. Um, we are going to enable tutorials, we're going to go through it together. And we're going to be playing a, a custom character. So, let's see. Whip, we'll do custom. So you can choose any of these pre-made characters. So we'll go through these and I'll, I'll let you uh, see these. Play the introduction. Hello, darling. Don't be shy. I promise not to bite until we've been formally introduced. 
My name's Astarian, and I've spent a century stalking the night, hunting for pretty morsels just like you. A man called Cazador made me what I am, kept me like a pet, forced me to do his bidding. No more. The Tapel's influence broke his dominance over me, and now I can finally pursue the one thing I've hungered for these long, dark years. Revenge. I'm going back to Baldur's Gate to track Cazador down in his lair. I'll be the last thing the bastard ever sees. <laughs> Asterion. After 200 years serving a cruel master, the vampire spawn Asterion is finally free. Free to walk in the sun, free to chase power, and free to take revenge. So all of these origin characters are characters that we can also meet in the game, so you don't have to play as these characters to get to know them and to understand them better. Just so you all know. Lizelle. One purpose, to wield a silver sword and ride a red dragon in service of my regent, the Githyanki Queen Vlakith. My first step on this path is to slay a mind flayer and bring its head to my queen. There is no flesh I will not carve, and no barrier I will not shatter to see it done. I am the one who sunders. I am the Undying Queen's most unshakable warrior. I am Lazelle of Kalir. Lazelle was raised ready for a life amongst the stars, mercilessly conquering the cosmos as a Githyanki soldier. Grounded, she must deal with a world she doesn't understand, and find a way to serve her people in a plane that despises her militant kin. Next, we've got Gael. Met stranger, you find yourself in the presence of the renowned wizarding prodigy Gale of Waterdeep. Please, no need to be intimidated. My virtuosic talents once caught the eye of the goddess of magic herself, Mistra, who named me her chosen and her lover. Thanks to a slight miscalculation on my part, that relationship eventually soured, as did the greatest of my powers. Now I'm merely a humble wizard on the road to redemption. Unless I can find the path to something greater. Gil's wizarding prowess once earned him the love of Mistra, the goddess of magic, until his ambition led him to the brink of catastrophe. Shadowheart? My name is Shadowheart, loyal servant of Shah, goddess of darkness and loss. There is little more I can tell you than that. My lady Shah tasked me with a mission of such secrecy that I surrendered great swathes of my memory in order to safeguard the knowledge of it. All I know is that I must bring the artifact I hold to Baldur's Gate, and that nothing can stand in my way. My goddess is watching. Shadowheart willingly undertook a ritual to remove her memories in order to protect the secrets of her fellow Shar worshippers. Loss and pain are sacred to her, but her faith is now being tested like never before. Will? Seven years ago, I was exiled from Baldur's Gate, the city I call home. My name is Will, but the people of the Sword Coast call me the Blade of Frontiers, 
champion of the meek, defender of the innocent. The truth isn't quite so simple, but they're right about one thing. I hunt monsters, and I always catch my prey. My latest target is a devil, and I'm right on her tail. Once I'm through with her, she'll never escape the fires of the first hell. Known as the Blade of Frontiers, Will uses his magic to fell the monsters and devils, menacing the Sword Coast. In a moment of desperation, he accepted an offer of greater power, forcing him into an infernal game he is struggling to play. Carlock. Ago, I was sold to the Archdevil Zariel. She put a hellfire engine in my chest and made me her prized soldier. I've escaped now. Thank you, Mind Flayers. And I've got a few scores to settle. If this engine doesn't burn me to ash first, I'll need people I can trust. An infernal mechanic and a serious amount of luck. But you know what? I'm not worried. After 10 years in the Hells, I can take on anything. I've got my chance at freedom, and believe me, I'm going home. Wow, that's really cool. Did you see that? There's like a there's like a fire element that was happening in her hair. <laughs> Carlock has escaped 10 years of service in the Hells with nothing but the axe on her back and the infernal engine blazing furiously where her heart used to be. And then we have the Dark Urge, which this character, unlike the other ones, can change his appearance. So the only ones that you can change their, you know, race, gender, appearance, etc. is going to be a custom character or this one right here, the Dark Urge. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to really, really customize your characters. You will be able to change the classes and subclasses of these characters, um, but these are the only two that are truly customizable. Said blood whispers to me, kill, kill, and kill again. My ruined body yearns to reap death in this world, and when this foul urge calls, it possesses my whole being. Injured, beyond repair, I know nothing besides this. I must resist the dark urge, lest it consume my mind. I must discover who I was and what happened to me before my twitching knife hand writes a tragedy in blood. You remember nothing but a path paved with blood. Unimaginable cruelty whispers to you from within. Can you escape it? Would you even want to? Okay. Now, the reason why I think it's still useful to show you all of these is because these characters all show up in the world and become, and can become companions. So, all right. We're gonna go custom. Um, let's just get into it, cause, um, yeah. Edit appearance. So, let's see... No. Edit character. Gotcha, I just do it over here. So, let's go. Origin is custom, then race. Um, let's see. So, we've got elf. With ethereal countenances and long lifespans, elves are at home with nature's power, flourishing, and the light in light and dark alike. Nine meters per turn. Elven weapon training, proficiency with longsword, short sword, short bow, and longbow, dark vision up to 12 meters, and fey ancestry, which gives you advantage on saving throws against charm. And you cannot be put to sleep. Okay. Tieflings, one of my favorite races. I always love playing a tiefling. You can move 9 meters. Uh, also, dark vision, 12 meters, and hellish resistance, which gives you resistance to fire. We've also got drows here, 9 meters. Proficiency with rapier, short sword, and hand crossbow. Uh, superior dark vision, 24 meters. Wow. And also fey ancestry. Saving throws against charm. Magic can't put you to sleep. 
Okay, humans. Nine. Armor proficiency with light armor shields. Halberds, pikes, halberds. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Carrying capacity increased by a quarter. Interesting. Cool. I am a Lutor, but I'm not going to be playing a human. So interesting. When I choose Tiefling here, it doesn't show that you get a Hellish Rebuke. But here, it shows you the actions that you're going to get. I wonder if Tieflings don't have Hellish Rebuke in this. Let's see. Astral Knowledge. Gain proficiency in all skills of a chosen ability. You get the Mage Hand Cantrip for free. Martial Prodigy. Okay. I'm just going to mouse over some of these for all of you. You can go ahead and pause. But I think I know mostly what I want to do. I don't know if I fully decided, but... I've been thinking about it, and I think I know what I want, so... If you reach zero hit points, you regain one hit point instead of becoming downed. That seems powerful. When you land a critical hit with a melee weapon... Your damage dice are tripled instead of doubled. Wow, half-orcs are <laughs> powerful. If you're going for a martial class, I mean, half-orcs always been a good one to go with, I suppose. But I think I'm going to be playing a drow. And uh, for the, let's see, class? Yes, we actually are going to be playing druid. Um, so I do want to be playing druid. Um, let's see, so... I don't think we need to go through the classes. There are definitely plenty of guides out there that will help you understand the classes a lot better. Um, but let's, um, yeah, so class is gonna be Drow, or, you know, class is gonna be Druid, race is gonna be Drow. And let's see, I think we were gonna be a Seldarine Drow. So let's go through these, Lulth Sworn, raised by Lulth's cult in the city of Menzobar Bor Barazon. I can read. These Drow embody the virtues of their corrupt and merciless goddess. Lulth marks her followers with bright red eyes, so that in the Underdark, uh, so those in the Underdark will learn to fear them on sight. Now a Seldarine. Seldarine Drow can be found seeking allies from all over Faerun, aiming to settle their conflict with Lolth and each other, by any means necessary. So that's going to be our sub-race, is Seldarine, um, so we don't have the token red eyes that the Lolth get. But yeah, Druid, let's see, do I pick anything now. I don't think there's anything to pick here. Ice Knife. Ooh. I don't think that one was in early access. 1d10 plus 2d6 cold. That seems really powerful. It's a lot of damage. Okay, 2d8 Thunder Wave. That one's relatively... Uh, is this one ranged? Where does it show range? 2 meter radius... 18 meter length, and then yeah, this one's 5 meters, so this one's, you gotta be a lot closer. Hold on, let's do the inspect so that I make sure that I'm understanding. Yep, that's area of effect, and that one is the range. Cool. Enhance leap, healing, cure wounds. Okay, and then class features, level 1 spell slots unlocked. Okay, right here's where we can choose our cantrips. Um, shillelagh, I think that's how you say that. And thorn whip. Resistance. 1d4 bonus to saving throws. Produce flame, poison spray, and guidance. Ooh, guidance can be really, really good. So, Shillelagh, your staff or club becomes magical. It deals 4 to 11 bludgeoning damage and uses your spellcasting ability for attack rolls, which in our case is going to be uh, Wisdom. Wisdom is going to be the stat that, uh, that our spellcasting ability is based off of. You can tell that over on the right-hand side by which one has the star. Uh, Thorn Whip pulls the creature 3 meters closer to you. Um, I think I'm going to take Guidance instead of that. Um, guidance is going to be really, really useful on a main character because we're going to be doing a lot of dialogues and there might be other characters eventually that have Guidance with us, but I don't know who my final party is going to be. So because of that, I think me having Guidance is just always going to be useful. The target gains a 1d4 
bonus to ability checks. Trust me, guidance can be very, very useful. All right, now backgrounds. So this is going to give us some bonus skills down here. Now I'm not necessarily going to be min-maxing or anything in this playthrough, but obviously I do have to be somewhat efficient since I am playing the hardest difficulty tactician. Um, so especially during character building, um, I may I may do a little bit of optimization, but as we go through things, I'm not necessarily going to be making the min-max choice. Plus, I don't know what all the greatest min-max choices are because I'm just not that proficient in 5e yet, so. All right. So we got the Acolyte, Insight and Religion, Deception and Sleight of Hand, Deception and Stealth, Acrobatics and Performance, Athletic Survival, History and Persuasion, Insight and Persuasion, Animal Handling and Survival. That one would fit in with the Druid thing a little bit. Um, and honestly, with that one, I would be able to choose some other proficiencies because these ones would already be covered by Folk Hero. Um, let's see, Arcana and History, Athletics, Intimidation, Urchin is Sleight of Hand and Stealth. Um, insight and Persuasion is good. Animal Handling and Survival is also good. I feel like these two right here are my favorites when it comes to the skills right now. So let's see, your skill in a particular craft has earned you membership in a mercantile guild offering privileges and protections while engaging in your art. Repairing and discovering rare crafts will bring you new inspiration. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take this. So I think our background is gonna be Guild Artisan. All right. Now with abilities, 17 is the highest you can go, right? So we can't actually get to 18 and get a extra plus three here. Now what's that about? Oh, I see. Okay. So we definitely want at least a 16 in Wisdom. So Intelligent. I do want some Charisma, some Constitution, and Dexterity. So I think Strength is going to take some Suffering, and Intelligence is going to take some Suffering. 14 and 14. So once we hit 14, that's where we get these plus ones, right? So I definitely want this to have the plus two. Oh, I kind of like how they help you do this if you want to just make sure that you have a plus one in some things like it kind of just helps you assign those abilities so you only get plus ones in I see so it's I don't think it works quite the same way as it used to then because you used to, I think 14, if you had 14 in a stat, you'd get a plus one in it no matter what, right? Okay. So dex, constitution, charisma, wisdom, intelligence, and strength are going to be the two that suffer. I don't know, maybe I'm just not reading that wrong. Maybe we still will get plus ones and you just choose one of these, but um, if this is the it, strength will, yeah, okay, right here you can see it. So strength should have a minus one to strength checks. We'll have a minus one to intelligence checks. Okay, we do get the plus two still on these. It just helps you kind of choose ones that you want to make sure have it. Okay, so yep, plus two to dex, plus two to con, plus three to wisdom because we met 16. And plus two to charisma. Yeah, dex, con, wisdom, and yeah, charisma. Now, arguably, maybe I should be like losing some charisma and going into like constitution or dexterity or something. I think dexterity is what a lot of my weapons are going to be scaling off of. Um, and also, I'm going to say some things that are totally inaccurate or off base just because I don't fully have a full grasp of all of 5e. But and when I make mistakes, you guys can all correct me in the comments. But um, I think that's what we're going to go with right there. All right. So skill proficiencies. Now we have some of these from our, um, from our background guild artisan. So let's see. 
We get to choose two. So yep, Insight, that one already has a bonus. And Persuasion was the other one, that's right. Okay, so Animal Handling, Arcana. I don't think I'm going to try and fix Arcana. We're just going to leave that a minus one. Our character just isn't going to be good at that. But yeah, Nature makes sense to get some bonuses on. Nature shouldn't be a, a minus one on our Druid. Animal handling, medicine, and survival. Yeah, I think we will do the animal handling. So nature and animal handling. We have some pretty good insight, as you can see. Perception is also relatively high. So we got plus fives on a couple of these things. Okay. Nature, animal handling, insight, perception, persuasion. Okay. Um, now... The spell book for a druid can be changed out anytime you're not in combat, so this isn't too important to make sure that you do right now, um, but you can basically set them up to start with. I do want to try out Ice Knife. That sounds really good. Let's see. The bonus action heal, Healing Word. It usually doesn't heal as much as the full action healing, but it can be used as a bonus action. We'll get into that more once we see combat. Thunder Wave can be pretty good. And then um, we'll be able to uh, swap in Speak With Animals when we need it. So like things like Long Strider, Enhanced Leap, and Speak With Animals, I generally won't have on until I just need them. Um, and yeah, Fairy Fire is really good. All targets within the light turn visible, and attack rolls against them have advantage. Yeah, so Thunder Wave, Ice Knife, Healing Word. Is that what I want? That's what we're going to try for now. Okay, so there we go. Now let's get into appearance. Okay, so we got buff, we got normal. I think I'm going to be pay playing a female dro. Where to? Hmm. What we let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, be wary. It's opened. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Where to next? What was Let's hope the locals are friendly. Be wary. The it's opened. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest. Hmm. Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. All right, let's Something go with. just woke up down here. Voice four. Okay, we'll go with head four. Dusk tone four. How do these look? This one has a little bit more of a blue tinge to it. Yeah, we'll go a little bluer. Why not? Okay, scarring. Okay, I'm going to go with that one. Little one across the nose there. Okay, add some wrinkles. Freckles. And I don't ever remember how to pronounce that, so I'm not going to try and embarrass myself. The t the yep, yeah, I'm um, nope, not trying it. Okay, genitals will be default. Okay. Okay, body art. I do like a good tattoo. It's a very druid thing, you know. Kind of like that one. We'll probably de-intensify it. That one's kind of cool. I think there are more options. 
I definitely remember seeing a lot of these, but like, I think that one's new. I think that one's new. Neck tattoo. Ooh, I really like that. It's a... It's a... a what, are, what are those guys called? The, um... Oh, shit. I'm blanking on the name right now. We're, we'll probably see one in the game. Yeah, I think I want to go with a neck, a neck tattoo. Do I want to go with that one? Nah, we'll go with something a little bit more druidy. Okay. Let's go with that. Bring down the intensity a little bit. Okay, and then piercings. I almost wish there was one that just did this style of nose ring. I didn't see one, though. We'll go with that. I would have gone with that other one, but I didn't like the, the black ones that were on the ears as much, so. Okay. Eye colors. I want all eye colors to be accessible. gonna go with the uh, black and the green okay we want a little bit of eyeshadow Metallic tint. Interesting. Glossy. A little bit of glossy. Why not? Yep, stick with the black, I guess. I think we're gonna leave the lips. I'm fine with them the way they are right now. I like that we get these previews here now. That's really nice. That one's nice. I like that. Like that. Man, there's a lot of these that I really like. I 
That one's good too. Oh man, too many. Oh, that's really good. Okay, I think we found it. <laughs> that's really good. Okay, now what kind of color do we want? Man, I love the music in these games. Tiny bit of a blue touch to it. I kind of like that. We definitely got some highlights going on already. Um, let's start with that. Let's see. There's the highlights. Maybe do something like that, so it's a little bit of the um, platinum with that dark blue. Kind of like that. We can also adjust the intensity if we want. That looks nice. Okay. Uh, we don't need any grain. Wouldn't Probably wouldn't come off that much with this hair anyway. Uh, we don't need facial hair. <laughs> Alright. I think we've done it. Is that our character? I think that's our druid. She looks cool. Are we settled on this specific? That one's really cool and druidy too. Kind of like that one. Do I want to do that one? Mm. Let's do a quick look through here. Right there. Okay. We're there. We did it. We found it. We're only 37 minutes in. That's all. Vernak. You need a god. Choose one. Okay. A guardian. This is different. This is different than early access. I still have no idea what this is about, but uh, I think, yeah, let's make it a tiefling. Now this one, a guardian, and you get, they have a full on, like, you're choosing a sub race for him. Okay, like, you're getting into there. Asmodeus, bound to Nessus, the deeper layers of hell, these tieflings inherited the, the ability to wield fire and darkness from the archdevil Asmodeus's infernal bloodline. Descended from the archdevil Mephistopheles, these tieflings are gifted with a particular affinity for arcane magic. And the Zariel tieflings, from Zariel's bloodline and empowered with martial strength, and can channel searing flame to punish their enemies. We'll do Zariel. Go. Chili tone six. Chili. Nice. Cool. Nice eye scar. We'll take it. All right. Maybe 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 we'll give our guardian that neck tattoo. You always gotta fade them a little bit. Make them look like they've been around for a while.
Okay, so let's see. Those are all the demonics. Really black it out up there. Yeah, okay, there is a horn option. I was gonna I wonder if I want to check the horns before the hair. I don't know. Touch of red. And what horns do we want? There we go. Darker the base, gets a little lighter out. A little further out. There we go. All right. There's our guardian. She looks cool too. Everybody looks cool. Let's go.
Well, I think we found ourselves in the Nine Hells. Here we are. My head. We are currently in a Mind Flayer ship that is, you know, just jumping between different planes. And while they were being chased by a whole bunch of Githyanki. So Githyanki um, are a race of people who have basically made it their entire life purpose to destroy Mind Flayers because they used to be a slave race to them. All right, basic movement. I didn't even read it, but we know how to move, so we're okay. <laughs> All right. Left alt allows us to kind of, like, uh, see some of the things that we might be able to loot and whatnot. All right, center camera. You can always refocus the camera around the current character, home, or the left mouse button. Double-click the portrait. Bloodstone. Take it. Good. that thing came from the parasite now writhing behind your eye we'll do an investigation which we have a minus one to so whenever we do a roll here we're gonna have a minus one on anything that's intelligence based some dialogue options require a skill check a dice roll that must meet or exceed a target number which is called a DC or difficulty class your character skill adds a bonus to this roll and in our case it is a negative bonus and we got our first natural one. Great way to start. Great way to start. Oh my gosh. Now, I could have added guidance to that and it would have given me a D4, but it wouldn't have mattered if we got a 1. So, a critical failure is always a critical failure. A 1 is always bad. A 20 is always great. You so. nothing more than meets the eye. You will fail no matter what your ability modifier is. Well... Reach towards the pool. Yeah, it was a bad call. I knew it was going to happen, but I had to do it for the role play. Seems simple enough. Someone else got out. Not everyone made it out alive. Okay, anything else we can interact with? A chest. Wait, oh, where is this thing? <laughs> Wait. Visions project into your mind. A nautiloid hurtling through the plains, resplendent with psionic energy. But that will fit in my bag. We'll go ahead and take that onyx. It's probably worth some money. Um, okay, where's this chest? Ah, right over here. Okay. 12 gold. I'm rich. Okay, can I jump from up here? Oh, it was too high. Took it took a little bit of extra damage. Oh, it feels so good to be in the game. and histories flash into your mind. A schematic of a nautiloid flashes into your mind. Nerves, sinews, as much living being as ship. Oh, we just picked that up. Okay. An eldritch tablet. Can we read it? So yeah, I push I to go to the inventory, and then you can right-click on these to read. Um, a lot of this stuff, if you've played, um... If you've played Divinity Original Sin, there's gonna be some stuff in here that you're just going to immediately be able to pick up on. 
when it comes to the gameplay itself and how to do inventory things and whatnot, so keep that in mind. You are creeping me out. not creepy at all oh my gosh I am so happy to be in the yes, final release of this game to save us from this place from this place you'll free us the exposed brain quivers in expectation please before they return they return you sound afraid why the enemy Who am I talking to, a man or a brain? A newborn. Born new from this husk. You realize you're talking to an intellect devourer, a minion of the mind flayers who abducted you. So behind the scenes they did a roll and we succeeded. Um, I think that you're past the point of saving. Tell me what to do. Remove us from this body. From this case. Free us. Please. Okay. So we have options here, and in our case, dexterity is probably going to be our best one. You can see over here that uh, the um, it tells us what our bonuses are going to be on the left-hand side, and we get a plus two in dex. Gently prize the brain from the skull. And then right here, we're going to add a bonus, and this is where that guidance can come in handy. We're going to be able to add a 1d4, so it'll roll a d4, and whatever we get on that will be added to this. So if the difficulty class is 10, it automatically becomes an automatic 9 because we're guaranteed to get at least one, possibly more. So 6 or higher would have been fine for us because of our plus 2 and a guaranteed plus 1 here. Success 14. The brain lifts from the skull, but you notice an opportunity. You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient, should it prove a threat. Mutilate the brain. Alright, once again. So this one's harder. 15. So 14, 13, 12. So 12 or higher is basically guaranteed, and if we roll higher in guidance, then our difficulty class will be even further away, but... Tells you down there, three to six bonus. Oh, we did, we got just enough. Just enough. Oh, hell yes. I love it. The creature seems unaware of your interference. It relaxes in your hands. <laughs> Our freedom is ours, friend. The creature pauses, listening. Something behind your eyes seizes in recognition. We must go to the helm. At the helm, we are needed. What's at the helm? The brain tenses, as though querying an unseen advisor. Do you not hear it? We will not survive here. We are needed to navigate. We are needed to leave this realm. What should I call you? Us. We are us. You're not creepy at all, little guy. All right, let's go. We are going to the helm. Followers. Some allies may temporarily join you. You can directly control their movement and actions. Click a follower's portrait to take control of them. Right there. You can see their actions here. So it looks like they have a 4 to 10 claw attack. And look at how much health this guy has. Way more than my measly 10. And we even hurt ourselves, so... <laughs> We're down to 6 HP right now. 
Okay, any loot here? Mind my step. In early access, there used to be a chest here, but it looks like those are not here anymore. Ooh, what is this rune around me? I don't even know what that is. Do I have anything on me? Oh, that must be showing us that we have guidance active. That's new. Look at that. Alright, before we end this episode, I want to get through our first... Oh, look at that. I want to get through our first battle before we end the episode. I have no idea what things are going to look like here in tactician mode. I'm very interested to see. Psionically connected. What is this? You are no thrall. Vlakith blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. Who are you? What made you think I was a thrall? We carry mind flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be gay. Mind flayers. We're turning into mind flayers? There must be something we can do. We can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. First, we exterminate the imps. <laughs> then we find the helm and take control of the ship. As for that thing, it will remain tame as long as it believes we are thralls. It may be of use in the fight to come. <laughs> hey, it can't be perfect. I don't expect perfection. Damn you ugly! Okay, throwing us right into the fight. Look at that. Yeah, this is different. Cool. All right, so it looks like we all have initiative at the same time right now. Um, I'm going to have you go over here. Right now, if they have the same initiative, you can have any of these characters go. So we'll do that. So you've got um, this guy locked down. So if he tries to run away, he'll attack him. So that's good. Uh, there's nothing else you're going to do, so you're going to end your turn. And then here we can see all of the actions. Now, right up here, we can see a couple of different things. We have action, once per turn, recharge, once per turn, bonus action, and then cantrips, a spell that does not use any spell slots and can be cast at will. Do you have any cantrips? It looks like you have mage hand. Okay. So, we can move, we can make an action, and we can make a bonus action. That's generally how D&D works okay let's just keep that in mind and you can do them in any order all right i think yeah this is the only one you're going to be able to reach make way let's see you have astral knowledge that costs an action so we won't bother with that right now now you have a pommel which is a bonus action so you can do a regular attack and you can do a pommel strike um, you'll also notice that there are other actions that can do other things, like giving bleed. Um, and those ones, let's see, you can do once per short rest, it looks like. It's important for you to make sure to, like, read all of these things to make sure what you can and can't do. We're just going to do a regular attack for now. Boom. And I don't think we're going to get close enough to be able to pommel strike. Nope. Okay. Yep, not close enough for anything else. 
You can see all the stuff that we can't do is grayed out. We do have a bonus action, but since we don't have anything we can do with it, um, we don't need second wind, which is also something that's once per short rest. We'll get into what all that means kind of as it becomes pertinent, but... Yeah, we'll call that good. Now, can you get close enough to attack? I think you can, just barely. Let's make sure before we do this, but we're going to move up here. And right here is a bonus action. I can do Shillelagh. I can't attack, right? Yeah, so 75% on that. Now, this is going to turn it into our spellcasting ability. So right now our dex gives us, what, plus one? And our, um, our spellcasting ability has a plus two. So technically, the percentage should go up if I turn this into um, into a wisdom-based attack. Yep, 95 now. Okay. All right. First combat done. Ooh, as a drow, I'm actually proficient in crossbow. Is it is it crossbow? Yeah, it's not regular bows, right? So technically, you should be able to use this. Oh, never mind. I thought... I thought drows naturally could use crossbows, but I must have been mistaken about that. So right there, you can see that it says not proficient with simple weapons or light crossbows, which means that we wouldn't be able to use this very effectively, so I won't bother putting that on. Could have sworn I read that, but we'll check that later. Okay, the void bulb. Strength save. Throw this alien bulb at a target and possibly pull in nearby objects and creatures. Pick up and add to wares. This will uh, add it in my inventory. This is something I like to do in these games. You'll notice that this one has that sort of like silver money icon there. That is basically saying, hey, if you go to a shop, you anything that's marked with this can be auto sold. So anything that you know you're probably going to sell, you can mark that way. Like the onyx here, we can mark that by adding it to wares. I think if you control click, you can do that as well. No, maybe shift click. Eh, maybe that changed. That's alright, I'll figure that out later. But like, if we want to add that to wares as well. Cool. Okay. So the asterisk probably means that we haven't looted them. Nope, you're empty. Um, Lazelle, you are a martial class. You can probably use a crossbow. So I'm going to send this over to Lazelle. Yep, she's proficient in that. So she can have that light crossbow as a ranged option. So she could do short bow as well, it looks like. Okay. Two to seven on the short bow, two to nine on the light crossbow. Oh, it's Lizelle's underwear. Nice. Okay. <laughs> okay, what did you come with? A keychain, an alchemy pouch, stores your ingredients and extracts. That's nice. Will it automatically go into that pouch? And a camp supply pack. Which will come into play later. We'll get this guy first. Now, if you hit the space bar, when one of these is open, it will auto-collect everything. So, if I push space bar right now, that just got added to my potions. These boots have seen everything. Okay. Well, we got through our first combat here. I think that from here, I am going to end this episode. This is going to be the first episode. So, thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 
And uh, yeah, I hope to see you all in the next one. Have a good one, everybody. This game is amazing, and it looks beautiful, and I can't wait to get into it some more. Bye. I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters, Darren York, ZTD, Knife Namase, Kyle the Monarch, Andrew Smith, Chris Murphy, JW, Quinless, Chris Smith, Vlado101, Andy Ford, The Blue Electric Cat, Angel Mejia, Black Mamba90, and Kyle Schluter. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.